Yeah, I'm Christopher Priest. Uh, I've been in the comic book business longer than most of you have been alive. Um, uh, to, to my knowledge, I'm the first African-American uh, editor and uh, writer in the comic book business. Um, Thank you. They're applauding for you for being black. Yes, we're <laughs> very happy for They're you. They're applauding you for being black and good. Well, There's a difference. Okay. Uh, Crashing in through those gates. <laughs> I created half the characters in the Black Panther movie and didn't get paid for it. Yay! Yay. Uh, <laughs> Clap for that one. Clap for that one. Um, and uh, Vampirella, you know, when I was a misguided youth, uh, uh, Vampirella was, a, you know, she was a big part of my, big, of my uh, you know, misguided youth. Um, I don't know if I've ever bought any of the, uh, the, uh, the Warren uh, magazines. I think we stole a few, a few of them. <laughs> But, but <laughs> they really weren't going to sell them to us, but uh, we were like uh, happy little shoplifters back in New York in, uh, in the 70s. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just, well, in all seriousness, it was beautiful art. I mean, obviously, she's a beautiful woman as well, but, and it was scary and, you know, that whole kind of thing there. But, uh, you know, Vampirella has always just been this larger than life, a very interesting character. And, uh, Every now and then, you know, somebody comes in and goes, well, would you write a Vampirella story? And they go, why? And they go, eh, write a Vampirella, okay. You know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just terrific. And it's a big honor to be uh, considered to, to work on a character for her 50th anniversary. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Thank you for doing a great job. Go ahead, Tom. Uh-oh. I'm Tom Snagoski. Started in comics, wrote comics for just about everybody, every publisher out there. Um, didn't really leave comics, but kind of phased into novels. I've written over 40 novels. Uh, the f you. you have a real job. <laughs> I wrote The Fallen, which was turned into a miniseries for ABC Family Channel, and uh, I've done the Remy Chandler books, and I'm also the only guy ever to write in the Jeff Smith universe, so I've written three bone novels uh, for Scholastic, and still with my fingers in comics, but when Nikki called and said, how would you like to come back and pick up where you left off 25 years ago? <laughs> That's really too good to not won't take him up on it. Excellent. And as far as Vampirella, I remember seeing the books in the, the, the drugstore, in the drugstore and the smoke shops, and the cup, it was a little too racy. I couldn't get that through the door. Ma would catch that one for sure. But um, I bought Creepy and Eerie. So I was aware of Amparello through the Creepy and Eerie ads. And, and um, when Harris picked up the rights to Vampirella, I was talking with Melanie Crawford Chadwick, who was the editor at the time. And she was like, what would you do with Vampirella? And I was like, I never really thought about that. And I picked up, I, I think I finished the run on the, the, when they brought Vampirella back just as Vampirella. And then I took over from Vengeance right. straight through until that ended. So that's... Yeah, she's been important to my career. Oh, thanks. Oh, and uh, I'm Joseph Michael Linsner. Uh, as Nick said, my signature character is uh, called Dawn. And Dawn got her start in an anthology, horror anthology called Cry for Dawn, which uh, was first published, self-published in 1989. And the, uh, the basic template for what we did in Cry for Dawn was already set up in the Vampirella comic books where there was this beautiful, iconic, sex, uh, sexy, but realistic, um, powerful figure who also had, she, she introduced stories as well as had uh, adventures of her own. And that's uh, eventually what we did with Cry for Dawn. And from there, um, went off and I did, uh, a whole pile of uh, Dawn miniseries, and uh, I've had a number of uh, publishers approach me about doing a crossover with Dawn, sorry, and uh, I always thought if, if Dawn was ever going to do something like that, it had to be with, with the top, and Nick eventually came up with the idea of doing Dawn and Vampirella, and uh, at first I thought it was a stupid idea. <laughs> <laughs> only, because because I, I only because I thought of it. If anybody <laughs> else had thought of it, it would have been genius. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I couldn't think of uh, any connective thread. And then I, I, thought, I eventually thought back to the, the fact that they both, they both hosted anthologies. Ah. So I came up with this storyline where they were captured by a demon, and the demon puts them into a storytelling contest, kind of like Scheherazade. Cool. And so they both you know, have to tell different stories to try to impress this demon. And I uh, did that in uh, 
2014 in a five issue miniseries, which I'm actually very proud of, and it was great uh, getting to draw and write this character I'd grown up with. And that, for somebody who was, uh, you know, grown up with comic books, that's one of the, the cheap thrills of the business, is getting to draw these things that you've, these characters that you've grown up with. Sure. Uh, the first time I got paid to draw Wolverine drawing Snicked uh, for Marvel, I was like, wow. They're paying me to draw Wolverine. I can't believe this. <laughs> and I went through the same thing with Vampirella. It's like, wow, I'm getting paid to draw Vampirella in a comic book. So uh, being able to participate in any way in her 50th anniversary, which lines up with Dawn's 30th anniversary, oh, cool. is, uh, is pretty cool. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Nick. Hi, everybody. I'm Christina Deke Lindsner. Uh, I wrote the uh, four issue miniseries Vampirella Roses for the Dead. And what Vampirella means to me is female empowerment. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. She's a strong character. Yep. She, look, you, you've got to be strong to wear that outfit. <laughs> the, come on. Come on. You've got to be confident to wear that outfit. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, when I was like, Five or six years old, um, my uncle had the the Jose Gonzalez door poster, and I walked into my uncle's room as I always did, and I thought, "Who's that?" And ever since then, my my love affair w with Vampirella began. Uh, um, Vampirella was was really it, it was a dream come true for me, as corny as that sounds. Um, it really, really was, and um, I got to pair her with Eva Lee the Witch, um, who was in. Uh, Vampirella three in 1969, um, and you know, um, two. Oh, it was two. It was oh, two. It was right. Two. Yeah, that's right. Right. It was two. Um, it 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 was nice to be able to take both female characters that I thought were both strong, and and not pit them against one another, but have them uh, cooperate and and learn to work together. Um, and I I really think that. In doing that, I gave Vampirella, of course it's a Vampirella story, I gave her her own story, but um, Eva, Eva Lee was a good supporting character, and so I was, I was really fortunate um, that Nick came to me in the last minute and said, hey, can you include Eva Lee the Witch? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'd love to. So, um, yeah, so, so I'm fortunate that I, I got to, to both write Vampirella and Eva Lee. So. I'm Gail Simone, and um, I've probably written over 700 comics, plus animation and um, consulting and video game work, list, lots of stuff. I like to have my hands in lots of different ways to tell stories, but um, Nick has learned that if he has a weird project <laughs> or some weird characters to throw together, like Red Sonia and Tarzan for the first time or whatever that I'm probably not going to be able to resist when he asked for that. But I was really, you know, I like Vampirella. What's not to like? She's bangs, boobs, and blood. That goes well together, right? And I agree that she's a really strong female character, and um, I like writing her. I liked including her in Swords of Sorrow. And um, that was another weird project that Nick came to me and said, hey, how about putting all the female characters that, that Dynamite has together in one story? Like, yes. And then I was really honored to be able to do the Playboy um, story for the censorship issue. Censorship is something that I don't like. I like freedom of speech. I'm very saddened by um, the problems that political cartoonists and artists are having now, right now, because you know, agree or, or not agree, they still have the right to say what they want. And so I was really honored to be able to be a little bit, a little tiny part of that um, issue. And to do it with Vampirella was perfect. And Joyce is always an amazing artist. So yeah. I like that a lot. So we'll do a little bit of a run through of, of everything. Um, one thing that I, can't say enough is again we wouldn't be here without your support and the support of the retailers that have faith in us and allow us to do the job that we love more than anything i can tell you that the ability to be working in comics in any facet i mean being part of dynamite is great 
We have a great team of uh, people at the office, but we work with some fantastic creators that we love working with. Um, but just being able to wake up every day and be involved in comics is just surreal. Um, to be able to be part of some events with some of the most iconic characters ever is just unimaginable. And, uh, you know, um, if, we, if we have time at the end, I'll probably talk about how I attacked each and every one of these creators to work with us one at a time. Um, I think it took me six years to get to work with Gail after following up over and over and over <laughs> again. I had to stalk Christopher Priest, drive five and a half hours to Connecticut to get him to commit to Vampirella. <laughs> this is not a joke. Um, but uh, this week, you know, since we're talking about Vampirella, Vampirella number one came out in stores. I hope everyone had the chance to see it, to pick it up. I hope you love it. Um, everything good in it came from Christopher. Everything bad in it were probably notes from me. So, <laughs> um, so we have some great covers, as you can see. We have Alex Ross and Frank Cho and a great cosplay cover. Um, and uh, we... Uh, we pulled a Marvel. We have 60 covers because uh, a lot of wow. retail. Yes, yes, we do. We do. Retailer exclusives. Retailers. Wow. The the the. It's amazing and appreciated both at the same time. It's a large amount of covers to hit the number that we hit. What's it? 80, 84 covers. Uh, is it 84? I think, I, I think that was the final. I think it's 84. It's 84 yeah. covers. Um, the, and it's a large number. It is a large number of covers, but the thing that's really rewarding is that every single retailer that supported this, this is a Marvel or a major DC launch where there are this many retailers who say, I want this book with my store logo on it. I want this book that consumers can come oh. to me only to get. And that's because of all the hard work of the creators. You know, it was the 50th anniversary. We have a great creative team, and we got some beautiful covers by some of the most amazing cover artists in the world, as well as the interior artists. San Julian came back to do covers for issue number one. Um, it's just been amazing. And we were able to even uh, commemorate Dave Stevens' famous uh, drawing into one of the covers. We were able to work with Archerm to do uh, something called an uh, FOC cover to help us promote this more so it's you know 84 covers is a lot there's no denying it but it's just shows overwhelming support not only from the retailers but they felt that they had the fan base that would actually want to buy these to read them so again I'll say it one last time I can't we couldn't be doing this without you or them um, we also have some really cool items coming out uh, you can see there we have a Vampirella statue uh, commemorating the Jose Gonzalez poster. We also took that poster and created a standee with three slots for retailers to sell the comics. A lot. That's really cool. Yeah, we actually uh, we yeah. sold a thousand of those standees. So is that life size? Nick, is that life size? It's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's six feet high. Wow. Nice. wow. And uh, a lot of retailers have been stocking yeah, the comic. I, I want one too. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know a guy. <laughs> um, we're also doing some Vampirella coins. They're in the newest issue of previews. There are some available through us, some available through Sideshow Collectibles. Um, we also have the 50th anniversary trading cards coming out, and our trading cards are different than most. They're definitely for a higher end collector and they have two sketch cards in every pack, seven cards in every pack. So they're really, really cool. Um, you're seeing the statue again one more time, just more of a close up. And There's some input from Christina on that statue as well. I think that's right. Christina gave a good amount of feedback and input and made it a better statue. So let's all thank Christina for that. Thank you. My, my fuss budgety ways <laughs> <laughs> paid off. So uh, this is now your turn. Who has questions for anyone on the panel? Room, but she wants to know if we're going to do a Vampirella. Zena, Zena Vampirella. We're, we're actually talking about doing a, um, a Red Sonia Zena uh, has been in the works idea-wise first. We haven't actually. I want it. I don't think the idea of doing, I don't think the idea of doing Zena Vampirella came up internally. No, and she uh, did bring it up for, last year, yeah. and it's, 
You know what? I will tell you this. Last year, everything was about building up right. to this launch. So the only crossover we've planned with Vampirella over the course of the last year, everything we did last year leading into this year was about Vampirella 50th anniversary, Vampirella Red Sonia ongoing series, and Vengeance of Vampirella. Those have been the only focus. We were at the time releasing the Vampirella Reanimator, working on that, and we had a Vampirella special, but we've had nothing else Vampirella. So we have been mono-focused on that, and now that we're, we're finally releasing some of these great books, Tom, you're on time, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, now that we're releasing some of these great books, uh, we, uh, that there will be more room to talk about something like that, because you're right, that would be a cool crossover. And uh, you know that, that weird would... crossovers are awesome, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> you know, it's we're funny. Also, we're also doing the um, in September the Red Sonia Vampirella ongoing series, where they are together in one book. Yes, uh, as well. So, That's pretty cool. Um, but the Xena uh, Vampirella is something we can definitely explore. It, absolutely, because now we're clearing the way for next year, so there will be new projects to look for next year, as long as Tom's you, on time. But you might, you might, you might see Xena Red Sonia first. <laughs> Tom, Tom's like, why am I getting picked on? I know, really. I'm, 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 I'm Tom's, anybody. Tom's, I'm on time. Tom's I, way ahead of schedule. You made me wait a year and a half. <laughs> Seriously, now, Tom and I started talking about two years ago about him coming back to Vampirella, and we met at a few conventions, and we talked about it last year in San Diego, and he said the 25th anniversary, let yeah. me see what I could do. Tom's had a busy career. And then at uh, New York Comic Con, he said, all right, 25th anniversary, I'm going to make time, I'm going to do this. So because he made me wait two years, he's getting his <laughs> chop. 25th anniversary of his series. Of his series. Of the 50th anniversary. It gets very confusing. It gets very yeah. confusing. Yeah. There's a lot of numbers. It's, way just, too many numbers. it's just the Vengeance of Emperor anniversary. Yes. We'll leave it at that. Yes. All right. That's out in October, just so everybody knows. Next question. Hello. Hello. Hey. So I really enjoy your, your Dynamite comics. You have a lot of strong female characters. I like your, your Burroughs stuff because I'm a big Burroughs fan. So Deja Thoris is totally cool. Uh, my question is, have you thought about doing Vampirella as a magazine again? We oh, have talked about course. that. We have talked about it, and the market seems to never want it. We are thinking about doing it as a standalone magazine issue 113 or 115? It would be 114, I believe. 114. 114. Yeah. Jeez, I was around it. I couldn't get it right. <laughs> so, yeah, we're thinking about doing it as 114, doing it at the end of the 50th anniversary, making it black and white, putting in all the fun ads, repurposing some of the old ads, creating some new ones. Uh, we, did, we did do a, uh, I forget whether we called it replica. Or we right? called it so the replica. We, we, did, we, did do a, we did do a replica of the yeah. original uh, Vampirella magazine number one, which I believe shipped the, I think I broke in here. Yeah. Right? I'm loud enough. Okay. Yeah. So Great. if we do it, we're thinking about making that the end of the 50th anniversary next July, so that that will be the ender. But... The one thing that we have to do, and this is where it's, um, I, I don't want to use the word difficult, but more challenging, is we need to get all artists that, whose work looks great in black and white that can capture some of that feel. Because if we don't do that, then it's, it's not the right thing to do. Right. So. Well, Linsner looks pretty good in black and white. Linsner does, but I don't think he can draw 64 pages Thank in you. less than a year. Thank you, I was thinking the same thing. Well, <laughs> so it wouldn't, it wouldn't, just be, wouldn't just be one artist. I mean, the, the magazines. Oh, yeah. Magazines right, but now it's finding more yeah, artists that can look in black and white. I can do eight pages. Huh? I can do eight pages. Well, I'll take it. it. You, guys, right. you guys are witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are witnesses. Yeah. I'm in trouble yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. A bunch of short stories. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that is what yeah. we're talking about. Oh, that's, okay. that's why I was saying we've yeah. got to find enough artists that can do it in black and white to make it look cool. And it, you got to give it that feel, and it's the art actually has to look good on the newsprint. I yep. mean, we yeah. to, it can't be like it's got to be like the 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 seventies magazines. Yep. And if you don't know the Vampirella magazine, it's got to be like the seventies Marvel magazine, like it, the Rampage. It's got to be Hulk. strong line art. Exactly, yeah. strong line art that looks yeah. good on that kind of paper because you want it on that paper. If it's on slick. Paper, modern paper, yeah, it, it just it, yeah. it, yeah. it just ruins the whole thing that you're doing. Yeah. So what's what's really it. funny is that you know uh, you guys could print one of those and we'll all go nuts. But if you printed it every month, nobody would buy it. Exactly. Is exactly. that weird? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> there we go. So this is a perfect 
segue I talked into Christina and Joe about this, but uh, writer <coughs> Rich uh, Margopoulos, he wrote, written a lot of the uh, later Vampirella stories from like 10, 100 to 110. Okay. A number of years ago, I had bought a script from him that he had never ended up not being published in in Vampirella. Okay. And it was uh, it was kind of I guess a sequel to 106 because it ended up you know going back to it. So this last year I thought, well, I'd like to do it for myself, and I ended up uh, getting uh, Esteban Moroto to write me a page wow. story. Wow. 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 Pencil name. So I get the first story for that book. We can talk. Yeah. We can <laughs> talk. Now Excellent. that's a real fan. Wow, when Adam made his own comic. That's pretty cool. Big fan of Gambrel and him, and he's one of the few still, you know, drawing that has Esteban is amazing. He's to me, Esteban is like Joe Kubert and Gil Kane, never lost a beat and still as yeah. great as he's always been. How old is he now? Do you think? Um, he's gotta be up he's, there. he's at least sixty, I would imagine. I bet you, I imagine older. Possibly. I'm not going to date anybody. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, who else has a question? So, Christopher, what were some of the storylines that you thought of writing before you decided on the one that you chose for? Oh, Vampire? I didn't choose it. Nick just <laughs> dictated it to me. You know? There's a letter, uh, there's a word that has two syllables. It begins with a B, and then the next syllable begins with an S. <laughs> he did... He did a great job, and yes, it's all him, what, except what, for the bad ideas. Those well, are mine. Well, no, you know, minor spoiler, you know, it, it, because it, it should be something that's just really, it should be something that's just, just self-evident that uh, it's, it's her 50th anniversary, you know, and I didn't know what to do, and I was, I, I was well, well, Nick, what do you want me to do? I mean, I'm, I work for Marvel. I, use, I, I, I just do what they tell me, you know? <laughs> And uh, Nick is like, uh, I don't know. Uh, hey, I know. How about uh, uh, all of her arch villains team up to like, you know, make her life miserable? You know, I went sold, done. All right. So it, it's not something that's going to be uh, immediately obvious when you read the first couple of issues. You may, may not. It, it doesn't jump out at you. But at some point, right around issue three, issue four, you go, hey, <laughs> there's the, 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 the you know. a pattern. It was, you know, these people are kind of creeping back into her life, and uh, and what are they up to now? How that all plays out, the specifics of it, well, that's that's you have to buy the the, the book to read that, you know. But uh, but basically, it's her 50th anniversary, and uh, there was all kinds of stuff that 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 uh, that, I, that you could do that you might want to do. The thing that I did not want to do is I'm I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of reading the same comic book over and over again, you know. Um, Part of what I don't like about what's happening with the superhero movies is that it's all the same movie. It's like, I bet you there's going to be a big fight at the end. You know, spoiler alert. I bet Sometimes gonna... an extra one in the beginning, and yeah. sometimes after the credits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so I think, I, think, I think the producers, what was interesting about Black Panther is they gave, the, they gave the director a little bit of leeway to kind of, you know, improvise there. And uh, the, the, the Avengers two-parter, there was a, you know, a little differentiation there. But you have to balance what the audience expects yep. with uh, you want to delight them in some way. Now, a lot of that's like telling a joke in a phone booth. So a lot of what we're doing is telling a joke in a phone booth. Uh, I'm doing a very different take on Vampirella. It's the same character. We're not messing with her continuity. But boy, is this a different version of, of, of Vampirella. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I assume I will get a phone call eventually that will tell me. <laughs> um, so far, they're really happy with it. But you know, we'll find out if you're really happy with it. And, and you know, uh, but it, it, it's 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 it's. I just didn't want to. I just didn't. I didn't want to write the, 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 somebody else's Vampirella. I didn't want to just recycle things that you've seen before. Um, it's, it's much like with the, 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 the Batman film franchise where you have the Tim Burton Batman and you have the Christopher Nolan Batman and, uh, and we almost had Batfleck and, and he screwed that up but you know but they, those are very different takes but they were all entertaining they're all the same yeah. character uh, uh, hopefully we're going to see a lot of diversity and continue to see a lot of diversity with, with Vampirella Red Sonja and, 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 and what, uh, what Tom is up to and so forth yeah, so that's all. That's all really good. But my my little area of the world is kind of 
uh, different, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and I really hope that uh, it, it catches on and that, uh, that you guys are, uh, are happy with it. Well, Christopher, uh, what I read in an article is that the one thing that you noticed about Vampirella is that she's solitary. Mm. And I mean, yeah. she definitely is. She, she's definitely, you know, all alone. So I, I'm actually interested to read the story. Yeah, well, it's, it's basically, you know, the, 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 the story arc is mainly about community. And uh, it's, it's a, it's a, I read a, an article, I read an interview with Bruce Springsteen back in the 80s. This is, a, I'm dating myself now, you know, which is my love life, too. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, but, too uh, much info. <laughs> but uh, in the article, Bruce Springsteen said something to the effect of uh, that everyone needs community by friends, family, faith, uh, the, these tentpole career uh, meaning. Um, and so uh, early on in my series, uh, Vampirella's mother shows up, Lilith shows up, and uh, Lilith kind of gets on her about uh, the fact that she has no life, that she, she's running around, she's chasing the vampires, and she's, she's, you know, she's this agent of good, which is what Lilith created her to be, essentially. But that she really has, you know, uh, at this point in her continuity, she really doesn't have a whole lot of uh, ties to the community. So Vampirella basically goes out and builds that community, uh, and then our, our villains conspire to take it away. So it's basically it's a story arc about, you know, about finding meaning and purpose, uh, love in your life, you know, in all these different forms. Uh, and then we throw a lot of humor at it. it if, if you liked my Black Panther, you're going to like this. If you liked my Quentin Woody, you're going to like this. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're still going to like this. <laughs> so buy it anyway. Spend that money. We, you, you, you need you. Let's, uh, and let's keep uh, Christopher on this series for at least 25 issues, if not 50. Because, <laughs> you know, while he gives me a little bit of credit for throwing out a few ideas, I'll tell you the one thing that uh, I told him, you know, I hired Christopher Priest because I wanted Christopher Priest. I didn't hire Christopher Priest to just write whatever we would suggest. So anything that he ran with, anything that he did, that's because he did it, you know? And that's the same for everybody on this but, panel. But, but at the same time, you guys let me do it. Right, that's And true. for me, and I said this to Matt, I said, you know, it feels like I've been let out of prison <laughs> because the, you guys are just going, well, I want you to go and create something and be creative. And I said, okay, well, well, number one, I think that, you know, with all due respect to people who write way better than I do and who know the character better than I do, uh, I... Th <laughs> I, th I thought I just felt like Vampirella had gotten a little too big where she was fighting these hordes of demons and she was sto stopping this massive conspiracy and you know and here's the, the, the mad god chaos with the horns uh, I guess that kills Tom series now <laughs> <laughs> no Tom is welcome to do it and that's what I like about the diversity let, let other people do that you know but I wanted to scale it back a little bit and then uh, my recollection of Vampirella was that it was a science fiction character, that she came from this planet and had these science fiction elements that kind of got retranslated into the occult. And I'm not necessarily stealing away from the occult. We have, we have uh, you know, one of the main supporting characters is a witch. And, 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 and you know, I'm not anti-witch, that's fine, you know. Um, but we wanted to reintroduce some of the science fiction elements. So there's a little tweaking going on there. Um, and above all, I wanted, to, I, I wanted to inject some humor. In the name of God, let's, let's laugh a little. Let's have a little fun. But uh, he, he said, Vampirella is Vampirella. We need to lean into her. She is a strong, sexually attractive woman. She doesn't use it. She just is it. Yeah. And yeah. that's the way it is. She's just a strong woman. And she doesn't understand why people don't react appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Re exactly. React to her the way they do or appreciate it. And that's the way she is in the world, and that's the way he's treating her. You know, obviously, Vampirella's been, the, you know, we went through the 90s with the bad girl era and everything that's happened, and that is part of the mythos. You can never take away from it. It was published, it was part of the mythos, but he's doing it in a way that I think most people who pick up the comic will appreciate. And, and I think, Gail, you, you found that when you were writing Red Sonia, that you leaned into the things that Red Sonia is about, and the reaction was... Okay, <laughs> let's check this. You know, let's 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 enjoy. It was it, positive. You know? It was so. a positive reaction from the fans. Yeah, when you have an iconic character like Vampirella or Red Sonia, there's no reason to deny those characteristics about that character. And I love 
Vampirella that's strong and sexy and sarcastic and all those things and, and you know, more of it the better. Right. Well, also I think if you're running away, if you're running away from the character that the fans can tell and they're like, okay, yeah. what's this about? Sure. Like back in the 70s, okay, now I'm really showing my age. <laughs> back in the 70s, they did a pilot for Wonder Woman on TV. Oh. Uh, starring, uh, I think her name was Denise Crosby. Or yeah, something. Crosby it was. Okay, oh. but they didn't put her in the Wonder Woman outfit. Nope. She was wearing a mini dress, right? Yep. And I went, okay, why are you, and she was blonde. Yep. And I'm like, why are you doing Wonder Woman, but you're not doing Wonder Woman, you know? Yep. And it wasn't until like Linda Carter that they, they kind of start, started to get it right and so forth. Until they did the disco -ish episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and then it went downhill. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but yeah, you lean in. And, and, and I get asked this a lot where like some writers and artists, and, and again, with all due respect to everybody else, well, they would want to either change the costume or they want to avoid this or that, you know? And, uh, and I, I told, I, I've said in the interviews over and over again, I said, they, they, they asked me to do Vampirella. If you change the costume, that is Vampirella. Yeah, so right. we, 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 she's wearing that outfit. But at the same time, you will see her in uh, the, the, the revised, the, the outfit that... Uh, her gun? No, uh, the, no, Kate, no. The Kate did. Oh, oh, that Kate left it. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 the, the, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people change costumes. Yeah, people so change clothes. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, clothes. everybody changed clothes today. Yeah, you know. So yeah. there, there are certain things. There are certain things with characters that you stick with. There's certain things that that change. But you know, I think I think when we had Jim Lee, Jim Lee drew a Red Sonia cover. I think it was issue 12, 12 way, yeah. way back when. And he said, you know, I gave her, and someone said something about, well, she's a little off model. And he said, well, I gave her some, you know, I gave you a new version. Yeah, exactly. Put her in some it. boots and some fur, yeah. you know. So, yeah. you know, people change clothes. Well, you know, my, so. my position is that everything that happened in Vampirella continuity actually happened, and you'll see that in 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 as we go along. That all right, this is a very different take on Vampirella, but it doesn't dismiss every anything else. And you will see elements of all these other things popping up and cropping up from time to time. So it's like. We don't discredit any any, any other uh, uh, version or anything that happened to her. It's all part of her overall experience. Well, you know, Joe, you said that Vampirella changes clothes. People change it. They do. Yeah. They do. And and actually, when when uh, I wrote the series and, and Joe and I were working out the panels together, um, we had decided that you know it, it wasn't practical her running around in that outfit. So you know, we gave her a little mini skirt. You know, right. like we, we tried to we tried to make uh, her her outfit fit her surroundings. But whenever she's doing the battle scenes, she has the outfit because, you know, That's her if it's not yeah. broke, don't fix it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So. Um, we were given the 13 minute mark, so everybody has questions, please jump up. First of all, I just want to say this is, this is awesome, and I'm, I, I love that you brought Vampirella back because that was one of the first comics I read uh, when I was a teenager, and I discovered. Uh, Tom's Vengeance of Vampirella at the exact same time I discovered Joseph Michael Hunter's Dawn so they were two really uh, things that affected me and I like the different interpretations you know like Christina's interpretation in Roses for Dead is a little different than yours and everyone I love all the different ways that there's, a, there's a, almost a mystery around her which is awesome there is. Um, there is. and I love her and for Tom who probably knows I've, I've, I've been a fan of his for years um, I was so frustrated when Vengeance ended and how it had ended suddenly. And I don't know if I actually asked you this question, but since you're getting to come back, and I know you're setting it uh, later, but did you, before everything went downhill with Harris then, had you had an idea of where you were planning to go with Vengeance? And are you able to bring any of that in to your new Vengeance, even though it's so much later? Um, I had a general idea, but when things started to kind of go sour at, at, at Harris, it was kind of like I kind of knew that I was going to be wrapping up my run and it had to be something big. And the end of my run, she's dead. So... Spoiler alert. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I was kidding about Tom a few times earlier, but uh, the reality is is that Tom did for... For a series that got ended abruptly, he really ended it well. Yeah. And uh, I think, like all of us, we grow. And, and I know Tom, even though he's he's only been tangentially as as involved in comics, he did a great Vampirella Strikes miniseries for us years oh, ago true. that yeah. was really, really well done. So his coming back to Vengeance of Vampirella, regardless of what the story would have been back then, I'm pretty sure it'll be a different story today because he's grown as a writer. Yeah. So whatever he would have done back then, um, it probably would have been great. 
I can only say I think we're blessed that he's writing it today with us where it's going to be even better and it'll be even better for the fans because, you know, I was saying earlier I'd love to have Christopher Priest writing Vampirella for 25 to 50 issues. I'd love to have Tom writing Vengeance of Vampirella for 25 issues. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it. That was easier than getting him to agree to write the series two years ago. You, my friend, I need that hat. That's a good luck hat. Right, so. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So, so you, if I could actually say something about Vampirella, I think the best characters, uh, like, say, Hamlet, uh, they're strong enough to withstand 10 million different interpretations. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think, like, say, Batman, 10 million people have drawn Batman 10 million different ways. Yep. And I think Vampirella is on that same level as Batman. There's something so iconic, so perfect. Uh, and I think she'll be around for another 50 years. If, you know, you're, if you're going to um, leave Vampirella to somebody, Nick, you know, they'll carry the torch, God you know, God. after we're gone. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I actually love seeing the different... Uh, you're kidding. He's gone before any of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. I'm kidding. I got a lot of stress in my life. I got Christopher Priest always worried about getting fired when he's doing yeah. a great job. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I was kind of asking about, uh, you know, how the supporting original characters, are they going to be bringing them back like uh, Pantha? I mean, she's kind of been a supporting, not that much, never really fleshed out, you know, when it's gone beyond. Pantha definitely Pantha. had a, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just asking about her and then also yeah. some of the other classic supporting characters from the war in time. Pantha definitely had a very, very high watermark when Mark Texiera drew her yes. in the 90s. Yes. And I think that no one has ever, very few people can draw Pantha as well as Mark ever has. Um, some of the black and white magazine work was great, but Mark just took it to that next level. Um, as I said earlier, when we were talking about the potential crossover, this whole year has been worried about making Vampirella work. And I wasn't kidding when I said I drove five and a half hours to meet with Christopher <laughs> to get him to write the main series. It took me until last August to get him to agree. And it was either you're in or I, the shortest version is I said, look, there's a 50th anniversary. It has to launch July 17th, the 50th anniversary of Vampirella's magazine. You need, I need an answer when you get back to your house because if we live to the 100th anniversary, neither one of us will have the ability to do anything about it. And that is pretty much what I said. Yeah, that's probably and right. Then, and then, uh, Christopher, you, you, uh, the supporting characters from Warren, you said you're bringing some of uh, the um, background from that and mixing it in. Are you bringing any of the supporting characters that were used in Warren to your new series? Oh, come on. you got to buy the book now. Jesus, you can't tell you everything. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm just you no, know, I'm planning kidding. going forward well, beyond well, the first issue. Uh, geez. You know what? I'd, I'd, have to, you know, I'd have to figure out who, which, were, which of these characters came from Warren, which, of these, which of these came from, uh, Harris. from Harris. Um, uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. Yeah, um, I'm just curious. But, but, but uh, I'll tell you who's not showing up. Panther's not showing up, in, at least in year one. If, if, if we find an audience and... And in all sincerity, it's up to you guys. If the, if the book continues, then you know uh, she's definitely somebody that we'd like to see again. Uh, and and Dracula, I I I, I really want to keep Dracula off the table for a while because I think he's just yeah. It, it's like you know Dracula shows up and he just he just he, he takes too much attention. He sucks all the oxygen out of the room, you know. Uh, so no Drac, you know, no Panther at least for, for the for the beginning for the for the 50th anniversary. Cult of Chaos. Uh, chaos. I really didn't want to do chaos. He's just larger than life. You know, he can't even get the horns in the, through the doors. You know, um, uh, but I, his kid will be showing up again. So there you go. I play with the chaos gods yeah. a little bit in, oh, okay. in my run. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Go to Thanks. guy. Yeah. No, you're, there's going to be a lot of fun. Every all, everyone who's been around for a while reading Vampirella will enjoy this and appreciate the reverence that these writers are bringing to the character, but also. Uh, new readers will enjoy it as well. So just understand um, that at least in my book, it's going to have kind of a Netflix spin to it. So all right, so here comes uh, Mistress Nix, but it's a reinterpretation of Mistress Nix. And a done. lot of times, I kind of ask myself, what would, how would this be reinterpreted for, for you know, 2020? How, how, how would, how would, what's a modern spin or what's a, a new spin that we can put on these characters? So they're the same characters, they have the same history, they have the same continuity. Uh, but hopefully it'll make you smile or make you go, oh, that's interesting. Or maybe it'll make you write a letter going, fire the guy. I don't know. We'll find out. Let's not go there. We don't, we don't, we don't uh, open letters. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, I'll end it with this. We're going to start uh, with the ladies first, and uh, we're going to go back in reverse, and I'm going to ask a few questions if nobody else will. So, Gail, Vampirella is the character that you wrote the least at Dynamite, with the exception <laughs> of the Swords of Sorrow. But, um, and I know that when you did the Playboy issue, the big thing was to work with Joyce. What was your favorite, outside of working with Joyce, and you did a very good six-page story. It's, it, it, the issue of Playboy was a great issue to be in, and Gail just knocked it out of the park. What really drove you to that story? To the Playboy story or to yeah. Vampirella? Um, I just wanted to kind of do something fun and, and um, make fun of, you know, trying to censor and control and that type of stuff. So that, that's kind of wanted to lean into that and um, do something just really strong. And, and it was really cool because putting that much story in six pages, I got to tell you, it seems like an easy thing to do, yeah. but every writer I've talked to, every writer I've ever yeah. talked yeah. to says, it's it's says it's yeah. doing six yeah. to eight page stories are terrible. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to do yeah. every yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. word has to count and yeah. every yeah. image has to yeah. count. Yeah. And they have to match up. Yes. It's much harder and to do it. It's, but I like those kind of challenges, so I had a great time. Yeah, no, it was great. And Christina, you really came up with a great four issue series. Thank you. So Thank you. when you were doing that, obviously you were very lucky. You knew a great artist that would help complement your oh, story. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's just literally like I, my studio's downstairs and then there's the floor with the kitchen in the middle and then Joe's is upstairs. So yeah, that, 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 that was not far to travel. No, nah, she put <laughs> but, a lot of but passion. But actually, actually working within the, the same household together, um, you actually got a different Vampirella than, than you would get from a writer who is living separate from the artist because, um, you know, when, when I would come up with a script and I, I would go over with Joe, we would actually go through the panels together and think, okay, she should be doing this here, she should be doing this here, Evely should be doing this. So it, it kind of worked out really good. Now I'm going to take it a little differently with Joe. So Joe did something really cool in the Dawn Vampirella crossover, and we were talking about it earlier today. Oh, yeah. He did an amalgam character called Dawnarella. <laughs> so I'm not, and it looks fantastic. <laughs> and matter of fact, it was such a great visual character. Not only did he sell the painting, but then somebody paid him to paint him again so that they could own the same Bri painting. Brian Peck, right there. <laughs> that was him. Yeah. Then, then you should read issue four of my miniseries because there you go. it's in there. <laughs> but, well, going back to just to ask Joe the question. <laughs> so what was your thought process into designing that costume and making that work like that? Because it really, really came it across does, it great. It does look really good. <laughs> well, uh, with, you know, the, uh, the crossover, there were a bunch of short stories, and I started, you know, just throwing crazy ideas out there in my sketchbook, and that kind of fusion thing popped into my head, and beyond the visual, I couldn't figure out how to make it work as a story, so it didn't actually make its way into the, the story proper, but uh, maybe I'll put my thinking cap back on and uh, <laughs> try to give it some more life, because well, uh, it did. You, you, you kind of have like a flair for, for fashion design, whether you realize it or not. You do. He is do. great. No, yeah. You do. Thank you. You're Tom. welcome. You're welcome. So, Tom, when you did Vampirella Strikes, that was kind of like visiting your old home again, your old neighborhood. Kind of a warm up. Exactly, exactly. But now coming back to Vengeance as a big event, that's got to be like, now I'm back. What's that feel like coming it's, back to it 25 years later? You know what's interesting? When I sit down to work on the script, if I'm smiling, you know I'm having a good time. And, that, and I think that's actually the most important thing about writing, either writing a novel or writing a script. If you're excited to sit at the keyboard right. and enter the world and work with the characters again, that you're doing it right. Yeah. So you're saying you're going to send us selfies showing us when you're happy and when yeah. you're not? This Rick just grin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never smile. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm always nice I'm, I'm just I'm just always terrified. I, I sit down in front of the blank screen. I go, I'm a fraud. I'm just they're gonna find out that I, I don't I don't know how to do this. I Christopher, just, Christopher, Christopher. Oh my God, I know. it's awful. Boy. 
No, it, it's a tough. It's a tough racket. I'll put it that way. It's a tough racket. All right. So we have room for one last question, or we are all going to say thank you for coming. So, five, four. Go, go, go ahead. Go. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Stand up. Come on up. Microphone. <laughs> Hello, hello. Hi, hello. guys. Hello. Hello. Christina. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you, too. <laughs> it's great to see you guys both. Um, my question is um, for the writers. Where do you get the inspiration for the stories for, for Vampirella, for Dawn? Um, uh, do they ever take place from a uh, home experience? Um, is it some sort of setting that they're always in? Like, I mean, I, I missed a bunch of it. I hope I'm not re being redundant. I'm, I'm going to answer this and then I'll let you answer it and then let you sure, answer sure. it. Okay. Uh, actually, Vampirella Roses for the Dead, I got great advice. I'm not going to say who it's from. It's a very accomplished artist. She gave me great advice. She said, if you're ever stuck in one of your stories, think about your friends. And I did. And I thought about different things that had happened and um, just, you know, a activities or, 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 or actions that, you know, I had with them. And once I started thinking about that, it, it was a springboard. And the rest of the pieces just fell into place. So I definitely, I definitely write from, from life. Um, you, you, you do too, but you, you have a more like mythological. Oh yeah, I think uh, you know, all writing is auto autobiographical. You know, sure. Whether it's uh, something literally uh, like a Woody Allen thing being very straight, very uh, close to reality, or something like Star Wars. Like, um, it all comes from, you know, a real place. And uh, everything I do, I can, if I sat down with you, I could say, oh, that came from here, that came from here, that came from here. Uh, it all filters out through my brain and ends up on the page. All right. Um, last we are, words? Yeah, we're, we're actually picking this out, but last words? Oh, you're picking us out? Yep. So, picking us everybody's out. Everybody's different. I think that's what it comes down to. Everybody takes it from different places, yep. whether you grew up loving some form of story or you're taking it from life or a little piece of everything. Yeah. So... Basically, I'll tell you the one thing that people always say, just write what you like and what you enjoy, and then you'll get there. Yeah, I so. think most people who are writers, are their brain's wired a certain way where anything that goes in can become an idea. Yes. You there know, you go. From yeah. anywhere, anytime, it, it's going to end up somewhere as a story, because that's just the way we think. You're laying in bed at night, uh, you think of something. The right. trick yeah. is turning it off right. for me. Right. You know, the ideas coming are not a problem. It's the calming everything down so you can relax is the problem. All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so everybody. Thank, Thank you for your question. <laughs>